his own story was as curious as his narrative. The tale of his life is the tale of a writer of incredible vision, an astute analyst and pundit, a lyricist compassionate and callous. Accept the fact that you're probably not going to get a big loan for your business. So what you have to do is you have to be smart, okay? Um, what you want to do is you want to minimize your risk, and this is how you do it. Prototyping basically is you create your product, but not in its final iteration. You have something that's minimally viable, okay? You see it all the time. You go to a website, and it says right across the top, beta. Beta means it's not the final product. It does a couple of things. Number one, it lets me, the user, know, okay, this is still sort of in test phase, so if something isn't working right, that's okay, it's, it's still in beta. Gmail was in beta for years before Google finally took that, uh, that, that sign down, right? So then what you do at that point, once you have your prototype, who can tell me what you're supposed to do after that? Sell, sell, sell. Now we have to get out there and sell this idea within our target market. The, we, the reason we want to prove is because we don't want to build something. Go crazy building this, this, this whiz-bang widget. And then we find out that the market doesn't even want it or the market isn't ready for it. This is where Ford went wrong his first time. He spent all of his time on the engineering and the mechanics and all of that. And then no one was interested. The, 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 the public wasn't ready for the idea yet. So he failed. Did it again, failed again. And then the third time, you know, some investors came and saved him. But by this time, the public was actually ready. This is how you minimize risk. Let, let me take what my, my grand vision and test it. Yes. Next thing we want to do is we want to tweak. Now that we have some feedback, now we can go back and say, okay, this is what the 75 people in the room said. They said this crap about banks, you're stupid, you don't know what you're talking about, and take that up. Okay? Um, so change, you know, change this feature, change that feature. What about this feature? It turned out what we thought was the most important really isn't. So now we have, now we have to tweak and make some changes. Look, if you're going to start a business, you're going to have to reinvest your revenues into that business. When they say you have to go the first couple of years without taking a paycheck, that's not too far from the truth. Now, an exception to that would be a service type of business where you're not actually using, this is what's kind of my advantage, it's a, it's a service business, right? It's intellectual, you know, property, basically, right? You're a consultant. But even there, you're still reinvesting the revenues back into the business. This is how you minimize risk, and this is how you get funding for your business. Next. We're either going to continue pr producing this thing, tweaking it, and selling it, or we're going to toss it the hell out. If it isn't viable, we're going to toss it. We're not going to keep trying to sell something, sell crap that no one wants. And this is one of the mistakes that a lot of entrepreneurs make. I made that mistake. I made that mistake. Trying to sell something that no one wants because I think it's just the bomb diggity. It's the best thing ever. But the only one who thinks that is the guy looking back in the mirror, right? Don't make this mistake. As I said before, a, a few weeks ago, do not commit, do not overcommit to the product or the service. Commit to the process. So the process says, I have to have a certain amount of sales or I have some, some kind of metrics that I'm using to measure my progress, then if I'm meeting those metrics, then I do a certain thing. If I'm not meeting those metrics, then I do a certain thing. And that certain thing might be 
tossing it. You know, we didn't have a business plan to get the loan. Let me tell you what we did have. Let me tell you what I actually had. As I'm collecting up information for these guys, I'm looking at my desk, and I'm cl collecting up all this information for them. And I said, wow, I have $1 million sitting on my desk in invoices, contracts, and purchase orders. Actually, not, 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 not I think if I do this, I'll probably get this much money. And no, contracts with signatures, purchase orders, meaning someone has actually said, okay, we've agreed to actually buy this from you. And invoices, that's where, you know, you've actually done the work and you sent them the bill. That's more important than a business plan. Not only that, we, we're profit. We, we, should, we could show profitability. We could show a list of clients. That's what made that possible. You cannot show up talking to someone with, everyone has a great idea. Well, I had this really great idea. Will you give me $50,000? I saw one VC, uh, he said in the video, he goes, man, do you have a URL? Do you have subscribers? Because what the VC wants, he wants to make sure, he wants to get the most paying for his buck. Okay, because their failure rate is actually really high anyway. But if you have something and you actually have subscribers, or you, you have actual paying customers, well now you've actually done half the job for me. So your job, your job in the beginning is to get up off, is to, you know, is to get up off your behind and get in the market and sell this thing. Okay, as fast as possible. Who's heard of this? Okay, listen, write this down. There's a program you guys need to watch every Sunday morning. Okay, because you, you guys, you got to stay up on, on, on the latest things happening in entrepreneurship, all right? On MSNBC, there's a program that comes on every Sunday morning at 7 o'clock. It's called Your Business, hosted by J.J. Rambert. This is like my, my Sunday morning ritual. And they talk about all the, it's, it's a 30 minute show. They talk about all the latest things happening for, for startups and entrepreneurs. And so, you know, you, you're going to learn a lot about crowdfunding and a lot of the stuff I'm talking about, they talk about it on there. So you're going to watch that and go, okay, Derek wasn't crazy. He wasn't just giving us his opinion. You know? So what is crowdfunding? Crowdfunding is basically, I walk in and I say, okay, guys, look, I have a great idea. All right. I had this widget. Here's what it does. I sit it on the desk. It's green and it just sits there. I'm convinced just by the fact that it's sitting there that people are going to come by and look at it. Now, who wants to invest? So just a, a few of you might be just crazy enough to say, okay, let's, let's invest in it. Okay. But it's not a loan. I don't have to pay it back. You're not getting equity in my company. What I, what I say is, I tell you what, here's what I'll do. If you invest $50, I'll give you one of these for free. And I will, on the packaging, I'm going to put your name as a contributor. If you invest $100, I'm going to give you four of these. I'm going to put your name on the packaging, and then I'll give a shout out to your mom. Right? <laughs> if you invest $200, I'm going to give you 10 of these, and I'm going to put your picture on the package. It's like a telephone. <laughs> perks. They're called perks. That's what, that's what they call them. Perks, okay? And then you have a certain amount of time, you have a window of time to raise the funds. And I'm actually, what I was doing before on the internet, do you guys have sound in here for the computer? Good. I'm actually gonna show you two friends of mine who went through this process. One was actually successfully funded, one was not. Now, these sites are popping up all over the place. They just passed some, some legislation, I think it was earlier this year, uh, to make it even more viable. So now they're, they're popping all over the place. So you have some. I'm, I'm going to give you just a few examples. The most popular is this one, Kickstarter. Kickstarter.com. I encourage you, go to Kickstarter.com when you get a chance. It is amazing. I mean amazing. People go on there, and they have an idea or, or a product, a product idea. 
and they say, okay, I want to raise $5,000, and I want to do it within the next 30 days. Here's the rule. You have to raise the entire amount within the specified time period that you lay down. If you don't raise the entire amount, you get nothing. And then people come on the site, or you invite people to the site, and they start listening, oh, Bob, this is pretty cool. Yeah, I would like to not invest, I would like to contribute to this idea. Because what it allows people to do, it allows people to get into the game, right? To get into the game of startups without having to be a VC, because you know, not everyone has millions of dollars or tens of thousands of dollars to, to invest in a company, okay? So I can show up and I can give my 25 bucks because I really believe in the product that he's, that he's, that he's working on, okay? Another one is, now, now Kickstarter, Kickstarter, they focus more on creative type projects. And as a, as a test for myself, I said, okay, I need to be experienced in the whole Kickstarter process if I'm gonna talk to people about it. So I actually did a campaign, um, not a campaign, but a proposal, and it was accepted. And it's been sitting there since like, like February. I haven't done anything with it. Uh, and, and you don't have to, you can, you can sit there as, as long as you want, all right? When you go onto the site, I mean, there's like several categories, film, uh, there's this one guy, he created some kind of a, uh, a gadget that goes on your, on your I don't know, it was, it was cool. Just, just go check out the site. Indiegogo is another one. Now, a friend of mine, he's like, you know, I need funding, I need to get the funding, I need to get the funding. I'm, saying, I'm like, look, dude, go try Kickstarter. No, I don't, waste, I don't want to waste my time. He finally took my advice. He went to Kickstarter. His project was rejected in Kickstarter. So he calls me again. He's like, oh, man, I told you it was a waste of time. I said, try it, Indiegogo. He goes to Indiegogo and it was accepted. I'm going to show you his, his product, his, his, his presentation. Rocket Hub is another one of the newer ones. Peer backers. And there's another one. I could not remember what it was. This one is a little bit different in that people become um, actual equity investors in your company, like friends and family and things like that. But they do it through this website because once someone becomes an equity partner in your business, there's a lot of paperwork involved. So they go, they, they use this particular website, I'll try to find it and then share it with you. And then the, that website handles all of that documentation. So it's a more formal way to make a pitch to your friends and family. It looks very, very professional. Yes. Oh, that's the best part. They don't, see, they don't charge a fee here. Normally what they do is they take a small percentage. Like for instance, um, I think peer backers, I think they take like 5%. So whatever's raised, they take 5%. The entrepreneur gets the rest, and then they go develop their product, and then we're good to go. Whether or not it succeeds is a different, is a different story. In 2000, and this is just Kickstarter. We're not talking about the whole collection of, of crowdfunding sites. $100 million pledged. This is just 2011, all right? Twenty-seven thousand. Projects line. I mean, 27,000 startups, entrepreneurs showed up and actually received funding to start their projects. So the projects doubled from 2010 to 2011, and site visits have quadrupled because this is really starting to, this is getting beyond now the the startup community, outside of the startup community, people are starting to learn about this. Because for instance, someone goes on there, someone says, you know, um, I was a victim of child abuse. I mean, not me, but there was, a, there, there was something similar to this. I was a victim of child abuse, she says. And she was creating some type of a book project for kids who were abused. So people see that, they say, wow, yeah, I would love to contribute to this project. So you're, you're contributing to projects that you know touch you in some way, right?